Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. You can be so kind to type in hashtag replay so I will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments. Great morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Go ahead and type in the comments. God did it again. God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. Go ahead and type in the comments. God did it again. And I am um, getting logged in so I can begin to share out the broadcast into my different wellness communities. So if you all can be so kind and go ahead and begin to share out the broadcast yourselves. Go ahead and type in the comments, God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. Somebody go ahead and type that in the comments. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Great morning, Gloria. I am always so excited about Mondays. I miss you all over the weekend. Um, so go ahead and uh, let's see, am I logged in here? Yes, I am. All right, so let's go ahead. It's a fine time to evangelize, and one way that you can do that is by sharing this video. After you have shared, come back and type in hashtag shared in the comments. Great morning, Jill. So good to see you this morning. Great morning, Evangelist Rosa. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Monday. All right, God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. I'm so grateful and so thankful that he has allowed me to see another day. I am so thankful and so grateful for another chance to get it right. Somebody go ahead and say amen. Aren't you thankful? Great morning, Annie. Good morning, Keisha. All right, I'll give you all some time to get on. Don't forget to make sure that you grab your water. Um, if you are going to be reading along with us, don't forget your one-year Bible. Um, grab your pens, grab your journals, don't forget your vitamins, take your vitamins today, and um, just a reminder that you can multitask today. So as we move into the second part of the broadcast and we are listening to the One Year Bible, many of you have um, been using that 20 minutes to go walking. So that is a great thing. Um, so be prepared to do that if you can. All right, so let's see here. All right, I think we're good. Um, turned off all notifications. Yes, all right, so go ahead and type in the comments. What time did you go to bed last night? What time did you wake up this morning? I don't know what time I went to bed last night. I didn't even put up my good night post telling y'all good night. I was so tired. <laughs> I had such a long weekend. Um, I just went to sleep. I don't know. Um, but I woke up today at about 3.15. So go ahead and share what time did you go to bed last night? What time did you wake up this morning? And then also share where are you tuning in from? where are you joining in from um, and we are going to dive in if you are on this broadcast live or if you're catching the replay that is not a small thing that means that you are on the wake up list um, and so we're just going to take a moment to thank the father great morning to all of you if you have not already make sure that you have grabbed your anointing oil hands oily every day and make sure you've anointed your hands and go ahead and type in the comments my hands are blessed Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything I touch multiplies. Everything I touch turns to gold. Listen, it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. Go ahead and speak it, all right? Everything I touch turns to gold. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus' name. How do I know? How do we know? Because the Bible tells us so. Amen. Um, so let's just dive in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold the line. <coughs> so go ahead and type at least one thing in the comments that you are thankful for on today. And um, we'll go ahead and dive in. So Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. You are good in every way there is to be good. And we just want to say thank you. 
We thank you for allowing us to see another day. We thank you for another chance to get it right. We are thankful for another chance to get it right. Somebody just type in the comments, thank you. We thank you, Father, for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you protected us from. We say thank you. We thank you for a sound mind on today. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. We say thank you. Somebody type in the comments, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, God is so good. Even if he never does another thing, another thing, we just want to say thank you. Um, so our opening verse for today, if someone can type this in the comments for me, I am so happy to see you all. Let me just slow down for a minute. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I see you all still coming on. If you can be so kind and go ahead and share the broadcast and come back and type in hashtag shared. Um, it's a fine time to evangelize. Um, so go ahead and share the video and let's dive in. Um, so our opening verse for today is coming from Proverbs 29. Uh, 25 Proverbs chapter 29 verse 25 yes I'm excited y'all know I have my new month post that I'll be posting after the broadcast always excited about new fresh month new just new everything new goals just new everything looking forward to the month of June so Proverbs 29 um, verse 25 and I'm reading this from the good news translation It's a little different in other translations but I'm reading this one specifically from the good news translation it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you this is a great reminder but if you trust the Lord you are safe it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you but if you trust the Lord you are safe but if you trust the Lord, you are safe. But if you trust the Lord, you are safe. I'm still hearing notifications. Hang on. All right. So it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you. But if you trust the Lord, you are safe. And before I read our devotional for today, what do I always say? Other people's opinions of me and what other people think about me is none of my business. Other people's opinions of you and what other people think think about you is none of your business all right so I'm going to read our devotional from the father's heart ministry today um, the father says today I am removing from your life hindering influ from your life hindering influences and relationships again he says I am removing from your life <coughs> hindering influences and relationships and I feel let me just, I am taking away every connection that is keeping you from the full manifestation of all that I have promised you. Uh, you know, with us being in this season, you know, that we're in, you know, being in uh, during this, you know, this pandemic, um, you know, during this time of social distancing and us not being able to see certain people. There are certain, many relationships and I believe um, that you all can agree with me that are not holding up, that are not holding up. And some of us have been asking, why, Lord, why, you know, what is going on? Why is this happening? Why are these people falling off? Why are these relationships falling off? I need you to know today that there is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. All right. There is nothing wrong with you. So that's right. Hindering influences and relationships. So I just wanted to kind of throw that in there. Be willing to cleanse the way that you take this is a time to come out from among them and to be separate. It's all God, all right? It's all God. It's all good because it's all God. Be willing to set aside contaminating influences because they can only exist with your cooperation and your permission to gain entry into your life. Move today. I call upon you to move today from the compliance to resistance against every situation and against every spirit that is standing at cross purposes to my plan for your destiny, says the Father. I need you all to say it's all good. 
because it's all God. <laughs> it's all good because it's all God. I'm still hearing these notifications. It's all good because it's all God. This is the day. This is the day, says the Father, to rise up and break the bands of that Delilah spirit that wants to put you to sleep in the lap of compromise. You must realize that when you slumber in the presence of Delilah, that the Philistine of your own flesh, that the Philistine of your own flesh is at the door to rob you of your destiny. But I need you all to say this morning, but it won't work, but it won't work. Shake yourself, says the father. Renew your Nazarite commitment to me. And once again, you will flex with the sinews of my spirit on the inside of you and carry off the gates of captivity that would bind you. And you will come free and many others beside you. And you will become, you will become free and many others beside you. So... That's our prophetic word for today. And I sat and I read and I read and I read this quite a few times. And it was so many different um, directions that, um, that I could have gone in. But I want to talk specifically, and I think we may have talked about this once or twice before, specifically since we were talking about relationships. I feel like he put on my heart today to talk about people pleasing again and approval addiction because some of us know that there are relationships that the Lord is wanting us to break away from, but we can't um, because of many different reasons. And so um, with that being said, um, I just want to take a minute to talk about people pleasing and approval addiction again. Um, so this was quite a word on today, quite a word on today. Um, hold on, let me, this was a word today. So um, I want to read, want to read our, um, our opening verse again for today. Someone type this in Proverbs 29 verses 25 verse 25 Proverbs 29 verse 25 and it says it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you but if you trust the Lord you are safe if someone can do me a favor if you are in the weight loss and lifestyle changes group if you can share this in there um, Aisha let me know that um, she is not able to see when I share and others are not able to see when I share this video so if you're in there if you could sh I don't want like 25 of y'all sharing but if someone can share it in the uh, weight loss loss and lifestyle changes group so we can make sure they see it um all right it is dangerous to be concerned with uh, what others think of you but if you trust the lord you are safe proverbs 29 through 25 so you may be asking what exactly is approval addiction what is approval addiction um, and you all know, many of you that follow me know that I absolutely love Joyce Meyer. Um, I love her. I love all of her books. And so she has a book called Approval Addiction, Overcoming Your Need to Please Everyone. Again, it's titled Approval Addiction, Overcoming Your Need to Please Everyone. Um, and I want to read her definition from her book. It's just a little snippet um, from her book. And it says, an addiction is something that controls people. It is something they feel they cannot live without or something they feel driven to do in order to relieve pressure, to relieve pain or discomfort of some, time, of, of some kind. Some addicted to drugs, for instance, will do whatever he needs in order to get another fix when he begins to feel uncomfortable. She said, likewise, someone addicted to alcohol will feel compelled to have a drink when life's problems begin to rise up and stare him in the face. She says, the substance that people are addicted to helps to relieve their pain momentarily, but then a damaging, controlling cycle been there um, starts in their life. She said, approval addiction is much the same, but instead of running to drugs or things like alcohol or gambling or eating to heal the hurt and yes many people turn to things like even eating to heal the hurt hashtag ask me how I know those who suffer from those who suffer from it seek people's approval she said when they feel unsure and shaky about themselves they look for a fix they seek out someone to comfort them and reassure them everything is all right. They are acceptable. And listen, I have been there. 
I have been there. I have been there where I turn to people and listen, people will let you down. But we serve a God who will never let us down. And so when we run to people, we are setting ourselves up, you know, to be hurt. We are setting ourselves up you know, to be let down. We are start setting ourselves up. Good morning, Yvonne, for more pain. And so it's important for us to be aware um, and to do what we need to do to be healed from it. All right. And so that is what approval addiction is. And also, um, I want to um, share some signs of approval addiction because you may have heard that and thought, oh, that's not me. Um, that's all right. So we're going to go through because I thought the same thing at one time. I thought the same thing. Um, and I was just like, you know, why is the Lord leading me to read this book? You know why? And so I get through half of the book and I'm like, whoa, this is me. Thank you, Lord, for this book. All right. So what are some signs of approval addiction? What are some signs um, I want to read through um, some of the signs of approval addiction. All right. You would describe yourself as a people pleaser. Is it important? Look, some of us are so listen, this used to be me. Some of us are more and more more worried about pleasing God. I mean, pleasing man than we are about pleasing God. All right. So what are some of the signs of approval addiction? You would describe yourself as a people pleaser. Um, you have a hard time saying no to people in your life. You have a hard time saying no. But listen, I want you all to know that no is a complete sentence. Y'all are real quiet this morning. Okay, there we go. Comments are moving. Um, I thought I was frozen for a minute. It is hard for us to say no, but I need you all to know that no is a complete sentence. And you have the right to say no with no explanations. And I want you all to practice that this morning. I want you all to type in the comments, no, period. That's it. It's a complete sentence. So go ahead and type in the word no and put a period on the end of it. All right. So while you all doing that, all are doing that. I'm going to take a water break. Go ahead. Let's practice this morning. Somebody type in no for me. No, period. Because <laughs> listen, I used to have a hard time telling people no. I used to, yes, 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 yes to everything. And then would be mad and angry because I didn't really want to do it. But I was stuck in that cycle of people pleasing. All right. People pleasing. So no, it's a complete sentence. So y'all go ahead and practice. Type in the word no, period. No explanation. <laughs> Sharon put three on the end, three periods on the end. Oh, all right. No, period. Did I take my water, sip of water? All right. So what are some other, <clears throat> excuse me, some other signs of approval addiction. You are overly responsible and take on the, responsibi the responsibilities of others. You feel guilty or stressed if you do something that someone doesn't approve of. You depend on other people's approval for your self-worth. Listen, that used to be me, but I no longer care about other people's approval because I know that I've been approved by the only one whose approval matters of me. You fear rejection or conflict. All right, so these are some signs of approval addiction. You fear, you fear rejection or conflict. Um, you measure your success on what other people think of you. But I'm here to remind you today that what other people think about you is none of your business. What other people say about you is none of your business. Other people's opinions of you is none of your business okay you think of other you think other people are better than you and you are a fraud other signs of approval addiction you take things personally listen i'm right i'm reading through the four agreements again and that is one of the agreements um in the book if i'm not mistaken i think it's the first one don't take things personally and i used to be that person listen don't take things personally that's good or bad don't take anything personally not just the bad stuff but don't take anything personally it is such a good book all right and i used to be that person i used to take everything personally when someone said something good about me i took it personally when someone said something bad about me i took it personally don't take anything personally um some other signs of approval addiction you have really high standards of yourself. Listen, I'm talking so high that you would never be able to meet. 
listen, that used to be me. You think you can read other people's minds and what they think of you. <laughs> Let me read that again. You think you can read other people's minds and what they think of you. Sometimes we think we know what other people think are thinking of us and we really don't know. And listen, how many times have you ever told someone what they're thinking about you? And they're like, what? I wasn't even thinking that. As a matter of fact, I wasn't even th <laughs> thinking about you. All right, so we go as far to think that we can read other people's minds and what they think about us and then go so far to tell them what they're thinking about us. And half the time, they're not even thinking about us, right? What are some other signs of approval addiction? You believe when someone disapproves of you, there is something wrong with you. But I'm here to remind you on today or to let you know if you didn't know, there is nothing wrong wrong with you there is nothing wrong with you all right and what is the, some other signs of approval addiction the last one i have here on the list your free time is filled up with fulfilling the needs of other people your free time is filled up fulfilling the needs of other people like i'm not talking about your family you know those immediate family members that are in your house i'm talking about because we're not able to say no to people because we said yes 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 so much that all of our free time we're spending time taking the care of the needs and doing things for other people instead of doing the things that need to be done for ourselves for our family or other things good morning wendy i am so glad that you got up i see a few of you on this morning that are tuning in please be so kind and share the broadcast broadcast and come back and type in hashtag shared and then type at least one thing in the comments that you are thankful for and so while you while when i gave the definition of approval addiction many of you on the broadcast thought oh that's not me thought as far as to let me just tune off and come back in 20 minutes when i know they're listening to the one-year bible <laughs> Um, so I wanted to make sure that I spent some time going through the signs. The third one was you are overly responsible and take on the responsibility of others. You are overly responsible and take on the responsibility of others. And so as I read through this list again, even this morning, I thought, wow, I had every single one of these signs, every single one of these signs every single one of these signs and when i realized what i was doing I, I listen let me just say you can be free you know you can be free you can be free all right you can be free from people pleasing you can be free um from approval addiction all right so i want to read again um proverbs 29 25 in the good news translation it says it is dangerous somebody type in the word dangerous because i need you all to hear me it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think about you but if you trust the Lord, you are safe. But if you trust the Lord, you are safe. But if you trust the Lord, you are safe. All right, here we go. But if you trust the Lord, you are safe. All right, let me see. I had some other notes here that I wanted to read. All right, so I'm going to share some of the effects of approval addiction and then um, the antidote or how to overcome uh, approval addiction. So number one, um, some of the effects of approval addiction, it can cause us to miss God's purpose for our life. And I think as a matter of fact, I might have put up a post about this last week. One sure way, what did I say? One sure way to miss God's plan and purpose in your life it's other people's opinions, something like that. Um, so number one, it can cause us to miss God's purpose for our lives. It can cause us to miss God's purpose for our lives. If we're so busy worrying about pleasing other people, if we're so very busy worrying about what other people think about us, if we're so busy worrying about other people's opinions of us, what happens? Fear sets in, you know, fear of being rejected, you know, fear of being talked about, fear of them not approving. And so that fear will stop us oftentimes, hashtag ask me how I know, dead in our tracks, right? And so the word said, it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think about you. This is not a game. I mean, so strong as using the word dangerous. Somebody go and Google and type and, and look up the definition of dangerous and type it in the comments for me. All right, this is not a game. 
So one of the effects of approval addiction, it, it can cause us to miss God's purpose for our lives. Um, 1 Thessalonians 2, 4 says, For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. Our purpose is to please God, not people. So again, it can cause us to miss God's purpose for our lives, all right? He alone examines the motives of our hearts. First Thessalonians 2, 4, let me read that again. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. That's straight out of the word. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. All right, and so that was First Thessalonians 2, 4. Hold the line. All right, number two. It can keep us from growing in faith. If we're so busy worrying about <clears throat> pleasing other people, it can keep us from growing in faith. All right. And John 5, 4, 4 says, John 5, 44 says, how could you possibly believe you like to have your friends praise you and you don't care about praise that the only God can give? How could you possibly believe you like to have your friends praise you and you don't care about the praise that only God can give? Okay, so ple people pleasing can cause us or keep us from growing in faith. Faith People pleasing can lead to sin. First and foremost, I have seen in my life, it can cause us to be disobedient because we're afraid to do what God says to do because we're so worried about pleasing other people then fear sets in fear of rejection and fear of all of these other things all right so it can lead to sin again it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think about you or think of you but if you trust the lord you are safe proverbs twenty nine twenty five. this is not a small thing it is not a game all right it's not a small thing and we need to take this very very seriously all right so exodus 23 2 says exodus 23 2 says you must not do wrong just because everyone else is doing it when you're so worried about pleasing other people you're going to do what other people do out of fear of being rejected out of fear of them not approving approving of you out of fear of them being upset with you so people pleasing leads to sin again it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you but if you trust the lord you are safe proverbs 29 25 all right, so I want to read Exodus 23 too. You must, you must not do wrong just because everyone else is doing it. If you are a witness in court, you must not ruin a fair trial. You must not tell lies just because everyone else is. All right, people pleasing can cause you to be a hypocrite. Hip, uh, hypocrite. People pleasing can cause us to be hypocrites. All right, Luke 16, 15. Luke 16, 15. I see you all are typing it in. Luke 16, 15 says, but Jesus told them, you are always making yourselves look good, but God sees what is in your heart. The things that most people think are important are worthless as far as God is concerned. People pleasing can cause us to be a hypocrite. All right. And so it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you. But if you trust the Lord, you are safe. Proverbs 29, 25. Proverbs 29, 25. Um, I thought, okay, here it is. I want I had something else here. Um, all right, so the antidote um to approval addiction number one. Remember, remember, even God doesn't please everyone all the time. All right, remember, even God doesn't please everyone all the time. Even God himself doesn't please everyone all the time. All right. All right. And so um, Psalm 27 10 I want to leave you with yes dangerous that's right it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think about you um, Psalm 27 10 says even if my father and mother abandon me the Lord will hold me close the Lord will hold me close all right no that is not the right verse for that I don't know how I type I don't know what I did here all right. 
So remember, even God doesn't please everyone all the time. All right, number two, remember what seems so important is now only temporary. What seems important is only temporary. You know what happened? Y'all, I was printing this off and um, my scripture references for this one was in color and only the black printed, the color didn't print. So that's what happened. I was like, hold on, something is not right here. All right, and so last but not least, um, all right, I do want to leave you all with this scripture reference, this one printed in black. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to go back and get the other scripture references. Galatians 1.10, Galatians 1.10, it says, obviously I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Again, that was Galatians 1.10. All right, Galatians 1.10. And I'm going to have to look up the scripture reference for the first one. All right. And um, also, remember one day I will have to give an account to God for how we lived our lives. We're going to have to give an account to God for how we lived our lives, not for people. So again, we um, talked about what approval addiction is. We talked about some of the signs of approval addiction or people pleasing. Uh, we talked about some of the effects that people ple pleasing or approval addiction can have on us. But one of the ways to overcome it is number one, to remember that even God doesn't please everyone all the time. All right, and to remember that what seems so important now is only temporary. And for us to definitely, first and foremost, remember that one day we'll have, an, have to give an account to God for how we live. So remember, um, people pleasing can cause us to miss God's purpose for our life. It can keep us from growing in faith. It can lead to sin because it definitely leads to disobedience. Hashtag ask me how I know. It can cause us to be a hypocrite, but we need to remember that even God himself doesn't please people all the time. So why do we put that pressure on, on ourselves to think that we have to please people all the time? And when I realized that, that was so freeing for me. You know, because I can't even please God all the time. So who am I to think I could run around, you know, pleasing people all the time? So that should be enough right there to set you free. And um, a scripture reference today is um, that I want to leave you with is Galatians 1.10. I'll read it again. Great morning, diaries. Good morning. Um, I see Talisha. A few of you jumping on. Good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead and share the broadcast. Come back and type in hashtag shared because um, you'll definitely want to catch the replay. And then we're moving into the second half of the broadcast. All right. So remember, one day we'll have, an, have to give an account for how we lived. And a scripture reference for that is Romans 14, 12. And it says, so then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. All right. So we have to give an account to him for how we lived. I don't have to give an account to Sharon. I don't have to give an account to Darice. I don't have to give, you know, an account to Sharon Coleman. I don't have to give an account to Yolanda. We, I have to give an account to him, God, the one and only God um, for how I lived. And so pleasing him <laughs> should be more important than pleasing anybody. All right. Um, I thought I had something else here I wanted to share, but um, I, I won't do that. So our... Um, the declarations for today. All right. I decree and declare that I'm a God pleaser. Hashtag waking early for his glory. I decree and declare that I am a God pleaser. Hashtag waking early for his glory. I decree and declare that I'm a God pleaser. Hashtag waking early for his glory. All right. Yes, I'm just going to give that one. I decree and declare that I'm a God pleaser. Hashtag waking early for his glory. So I had some other scripture references that I wanted to leave, but um, I think my other paper is in my closet. So I will type whatever I forgot to give you all in the comments because I don't have it. So if someone can type the, the name of the book, um, Approval Addiction, Overcoming Your Need to Please Everyone by Joyce Meyer in the comments for me. Um, again, it's Approval Addiction, Overcoming Your Need to Please Everyone by Joyce Meyer. Um, and I'll share the link to the group. And I cannot find my page with all the other scripture references. 
but I think I gave you all enough for now. So I'll, I'll share the rest later. I decree and declare that I am a God pleaser. Hashtag waking early for his glory. I decree and declare that I am a God pleaser. Yes. Um, so that's it. So go ahead and share your takeaways, something that um, you will do differently because of what you heard. Uh, what was your aha moment? Something that stood out to you. Um, I'm not going to say um, that every now and then, you know, the need to people please doesn't rear its ugly head. But I definitely listen. What does Joyce Meyer say? I'm not where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. So I find myself even wanting to say yes to people, even when I know um, that either I shouldn't be saying yes or God didn't tell me to say yes um, out of fear of someone being upset with me. So um, listen, I'm not telling you anything <laughs> that I don't know, anything that, you know, I have either. And that's the one thing I've learned, noticed, not learned, waking early for his glory. As much as I talk about right here in the mornings, I can honestly say that it, um, I don't think I've ever talked about anything that I either haven't gone through myself or I haven't, haven't overcome. And I'm like, man, I've been through some things. And listen, not only have I been through some things, I have overcome some things. And so what does that tell you? That, you know, everything happens for a reason. You know, everything happens for a reason. And God doesn't waste a thing he doesn't waste a thing because we are then able to say you know what I've gone through that and this is you know and this is what God is doing right now to help me to get through it or this is what God has done to to get me through it you know this is how I overcame you know so God doesn't waste a thing and so if you don't know anything else you know God life doesn't happen to us it happens for us and I even can go as far as to say it doesn't only happen for us. You know, everything that happens to us in life doesn't happen to us. It happens for us. I believe that's the same. All right. So that's it. Um, we are going to move into the second half of the broadcast. If you are um, tuning in with us live for the first time, you made it this far. Thank you. Um, we are about to pull out our one-year Bibles. Um, if you want to follow along with us, the publisher is Tyndale. You can find this online or um, at your local bookstore. And we are about to start reading. We are moving into a new month, June 1st. How exciting. Um, so if someone can type in audio.oneyearbibleonline.com, audio.oneyearbibleonline.com, and there was a page that had some more scripture references that I wanted to leave you all with. And when I go to the back after the broadcast, I will get it because I'm missing a page. I'm like, where are my other scripture references? All right, so let's get ready. If you haven't shared, go ahead and share. Um, if you didn't grab your water yet, go ahead and do that. Um, and I'm going to pull this up on my phone. And I'll have to come back and read your takeaways and your comments, okay? All right. One year audio dot when your bible online dot com now is a fine time to share it's your birthday month uh yeah you have um anthony's birthday is on the fourth my husband's birthday is on the fourth y'all share the same birthday sharon how fun yeah he was reminding us all day yesterday that his birthday is on the fourth i'm like we know trust me we won't forget we'll never forget <laughs> he'll make sure of that <laughs> His birthday is on the 4th. <laughs> you want to fulfill God's purpose for your life and not others. Amen. That's right. Okay, let me go ahead and get this set up. Let's see. May, no, not May 31st, June 1st. Let's get ready. Okay, here we go. If the volume is okay, type a number Our two. Our reading in the Old Testament today will be from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 18, verse 1, through chapter 19, verse 10. We'll read about two armies. Is the volume there okay? There can be no neutrality when it comes to supporting and defending God's kingdom. We can understand a father's concern for a son, but there can be no gentleness when it comes to dealing with sin as we'll see here in the story of David and his love and his desired tenderness 
uh, for his son Absalom. David wanted love without justice. But with Joab, it was justice without love. I wanted to make sure it's These not two too guys loud. Were really opposites. <laughs> you see, only on the cross of Christ are love and justice both satisfied. God did not spare even his own son. We'll read about two monuments uh, also here in 2 Samuel 18 and 19. Both Saul and Absalom set up monuments to their memory. But God, what do we remember about them? Today. Joab mm -hmm. and his men built the true monument, a heap of stones over the dead body of a proud rebel. The life you live is the monument you build, and ultimately the truth will come out. And then we'll also read about two messages. Ahimeaz had ambition and ability, but he lacked the maturity needed to minister to the king. Before you start to run, be sure you are the right person to you go deliver ahead and the share message. the broadcast if you haven't shared. Well, with that, let's begin our reading today in the Old Testament. Good morning. June 1st, 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 through chapter 19, verse 10. David now appointed generals and captains to lead his troops. One third were placed under Joab, one third under Joab's brother, Abishai, son of Zeruiah and one-third under Ittai, the Gittite. The king told his troops, I am going out with you. But his men objected strongly. You must not go, they urged. If we have to turn and run, and even if half of us die, it will make no difference to Absalom's troops. They will be looking only for you. You are worth 10,000 of us, and it is better that you stay here in the city and send us help if we need it. If you think that's the best plan, I'll do it. The king finally agreed. So he stood at the gate of the city as all the divisions of troops passed by. And the king gave this command to Joab, Abishai, and Ittai. For my sake, deal gently with young Absalom. And all the troops heard the king give this order to his commanders. So the battle began in the forest of Ephraim and the Israelite troops were beaten back by David's men. There was a great slaughter, and 20,000 men laid down their lives that day. The battle raged all across the countryside, and more men died because of the forest than were killed by the sword. <coughs> During the battle, Absalom <coughs> came unexpectedly upon some of David's men. He tried to escape on his mule, but as he rode beneath the thick branches of a great oak, his head got caught. His mule kept going and left him dangling in the air. One of David's men saw what had happened and told Joab, I saw Absalom dangling in a tree. What? Joab demanded. You saw him there and didn't kill him? I would have rewarded you with ten pieces of silver and a hero's belt. I wouldn't do it for a thousand pieces of silver, the man replied. We all heard the king say to you and Abishai and Ittai, For my sake, please don't harm young Absalom. And if I had betrayed the king by killing his son, and the king would certainly find out who did it, you yourself would be the first to abandon me. Enough of this nonsense, Joab said. Then he took three daggers and plunged them into Absalom's heart as he dangled from the oak still alive. Ten of Joab's young armor-bearers then surrounded Absalom and killed him. Then Joab blew the trumpet, and his men returned from chasing the army of Israel. They threw Absalom's body into a deep pit in the forest and piled a great heap of stones over it, and the army of Israel fled to their homes. During his lifetime, Absalom had built a monument to himself in the king's valley, for he had said, I have no son to carry on my name. He named the monument after himself, and it is known as Absalom's monument to this day. Then Zadok's son, Ahimaaz, said, Let me run to the king with the good news that the Lord has saved him from his enemy Absalom. No, Joab told him. It wouldn't be good news to the king that his son is dead. You can be my messenger some other time, but not today. Then Joab said to a man from Cush, Go tell the king what you have seen. The man bowed and ran off. But Ahimeaz continued to plead with Joab, 
Whatever happens, please let me go too. Why should you go, my son? Joab replied. There will be no reward for you. Yes, but let me go anyway, he begged. Joab finally said, all right, go ahead. Then Ahimeaz took a shortcut across the plain of the Jordan and got to Mahanaim ahead of the man from Cush. While David was sitting at the city gate, the watchman climbed to the roof of the gateway by the wall. As he looked, he saw a lone man running toward them. He shouted the news down to David, and the king replied, If he is alone, he has news. As the messenger came closer, the watchman saw another man running toward them. He shouted down, Here comes another one. The king replied, He also will have news. The first man runs like Ahimeaz, son of Zadok, the watchman said. He is a good man and comes with good news, the king replied. Then Ahimeaz cried out to the king, All is well. He bowed low with his face to the ground and said, Blessed be the Lord your God, who has handed over the rebels who dared to stand against you. What about young Absalom, the king demanded. Is he all right? Ahimeaz replied, When Joab told me to come, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't know what was happening. Wait here, the king told him. So Ahimeaz stepped aside. Then the man from Cush arrived and said, I have good news for my lord the king. Today the lord has rescued you from all those who rebelled against you. What about young Absalom, the king demanded. Is he all right? And the Cushite replied, May all of your enemies both now and in the future be as that young man is. The king was overcome with emotion. He went up to his room over the gateway and burst into tears. And as he went, he cried, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom. If only I could have died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Word soon reached Joab that the king was weeping and mourning for Absalom. As the troops heard of the king's deep grief for his son, the joy of that day's victory was turned into deep sadness. They crept back into the city as though they were ashamed and had been beaten in battle. The king covered his face with his hands and kept on weeping. Oh, my son Absalom. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab went to the king's room and said to him, We saved your life today and the lives of your sons, your daughters and your wives and concubines. Yet you act like this, making us feel ashamed, as though we had done something wrong. You seem to love those who hate you and hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that we mean nothing to you. If Absalom had lived and all of us had died, you would be pleased. Now go out there and congratulate the troops, for I swear by the Lord that if you don't, not a single one of them will remain here tonight. Then you'll be worse off than you have ever been. So the king went out and sat at the city gate, and as the news spread throughout the city that he was there, everyone went to him. Meanwhile, the Israelites who supported Absalom had fled to their homes, and throughout the tribes of Israel, there was much discussion and argument going on. The people were saying, the king saved us from our enemies, the Philistines, but Absalom chased him out of the country. Now Absalom, whom we anointed to rule over us, is dead. Let's ask David to come back and be our king again. June 1st. And now we turn our attention to today's reading of the New Testament. And we'll be looking into the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 31, where we'll read about confusion. Mary jumped to conclusions and soon had Peter and John on the run. They were busy. But they had nothing to say and were accomplishing very little. They saw the evidence for the resurrection, but it did not change their lives. They needed a meeting with the living Christ. We'll read about love. Unbelief blinds our eyes to the Lord's presence. See, when he speaks his word to us, faith and love are rekindled. Mary was changed from a mourner to a missionary when she met the living Lord. And then we'll read about peace. Locked doors will not give you peace, nor will they keep out your loving Savior. He comes with a message of peace based on his sacrifice on the cross. 
And also packed into this passage, we'll read about faith. There is so much here. The Lord tenderly deals with our doubts and unbelief. We, today, cannot see him or feel his wounds. But we have the word of God to assure us. When your faith falters, do not ask for signs. Mm -hmm. Open his word and let him reassure you. Open his and now let's read the reassuring word of God here in the New Testament. Okay, here we go. June 1st. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 31. Early Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, They have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and I don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple ran to the tomb to see. The other disciple outran Peter and got there first. He stooped and looked in, and saw the linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying to the side. Then the other disciple also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they hadn't realized that the scripture said he would rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels sitting at the head and foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Why are you crying? the angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She glanced over her shoulder, and saw someone standing behind her. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned toward him and exclaimed, Teacher! Don't cling to me, Jesus said. For I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. That evening, on the first day of the week, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see, and he showed them his side. They were filled with joy when they saw their Lord. He spoke to them again and said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. One of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. Doubting Thomas. They told him, <laughs> we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who haven't seen me and mm -hmm. believe anyway. Jesus' disciples say, saw him blessed. do many other miraculous signs besides the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life. Say, I am blessed. Y'all type that in the comments. Today we're from Psalm 119. Verses 153 through 176. 
And here we'll read about the fact that one of the most difficult things in the life of faith is to be accused by Satan and ungodly people. Plead my cause, prays the psalmist, and God defended him. When the enemy accuses you, let the word of God assure you. For the word is truth. Mm -hmm. If Satan tries to drag you into his court, well, read Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. Knowing the word of God and obeying it will bring joy to your heart. The kind of joy you would have if you found a buried treasure or inherited a fortune. If material wealth is your goal, God's word will not be a joy to you. But if you love the word more than money, you will have eternal spiritual treasures. Along with joy, you'll experience love and hope. These are treasures that money cannot buy if you put the word of god first in your life you'll have something to sing about spontaneously you'll find yourself singing god's word and turning statutes into songs you see when your heart delights in god's law your lips must declare god's praise after all you talk about the things you love right when god's word fills your heart the right words will come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Psalm 119, verses 153 through 176. Look down upon my sorrows and rescue me, for I have not forgotten your law. Argue my case, take my side. Protect my life as you promised. Mm -hmm. The wicked are far from salvation, mm -hmm. for they do not bother with your principles. Lord, how great is your mercy. In your justice, give me back my life. Many persecute and trouble me, yet I have not swerved from your decrees. I hate these traitors, because they care nothing for your word. See how I love your commandments, Lord. Give back my life, because of your unfailing love. All your words are true. All your just laws will stand forever. Powerful people harass me without cause. But my heart trembles only at your word. I rejoice in your word like one who finds a great treasure. I hate and abhor all falsehood. But I love your law. I will praise you seven times a day because all your laws are just. Those who love your law have great peace and do not stumble. I long for your salvation, Lord. So I have obeyed your commands. I have obeyed your decrees, and I love them very much. Yes, I obey your commandments and decrees, because you know everything I do. Oh, Lord, listen to my cry. Give me the discerning mind you promised. Listen to my prayer. Rescue me as you promised. Let my lips burst forth with praise, for you have taught me your principles. Let my tongue sing about your word, for all your commands are right. Stand ready to help me, for I have chosen to follow your commandments. O oh Lord, I have longed for your salvation, and your law is my delight. Let me live so I can praise you, and may your laws sustain me. I have wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me, for I have not forgotten your commands. Amen. Proverbs 16, verses 14 and 15. The anger of the king is a deadly threat. The wise do what they can to appease it. When the king smiles, there is life. His favor refreshes like a gentle rain. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah, oh, so this was so good today. I, do you all like listening to this together? I really, really enjoy listening to this with you all. Um, so I loved verse, um, what was it? Um, 
John 20, verse 29, it said, Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. And I had you all type in, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. So um, remember, if you want to dig deeper, you can pull the... Um, the spec Bible study method that I share a lot in the comments. You can even find it over on the Waking Early for His Glory page. And you just take one scripture reference um, and break it down. And so um, I remember when I first started reading through the One Year Bible, I couldn't really choose a verse that stood out to me. So there's always a key verse that's highlighted every day that you can start out with. And so today's um, key verse is John 20 verse 31. John 20 verse 30, 20 verse. No, it's actually John 20 verses 30 and 31. So those are the two key verses today. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. So that's the verse that you can use today or any of the other scripture references or verses that I gave you all. So um, that's the key verse for today. So that's it. So um, you shared your takeaways um, from the first part of the broadcast, people pleasing. And so someone typed in the book already. It's Approval Addiction, Overcoming Your Need to Please Everyone by Joyce Meyer. I encourage you all to get the book um, because remember, Proverbs 29, 25 said, it's, it's, it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you. But if you trust the Lord, you are safe. All right. So that's it for today. That's it. And our declaration is, I decree and declare that I am a God pleaser. Hashtag wake in early for his glory. So that's it. And let's just let me let's just finish our water. We're not going to end the broadcast without finishing our water, right? So remember, drink your water, take your vitamins, go for at least a 30-minute walk today, and have a great day on purpose. And what time is it? It's 5.33. Anthony is off today, so that's why he his alarm clock didn't go off. But look, I still got up, y'all. I got up. He's in the bed when I got up. <laughs> He's off today. So let me finish my water. Y'all gonna watch me drink my water. Mm -mm. So I'll read your takeaways. Yes, Leslie says, I won't take things personally. Amen. Yes, don't take things personally. That's right. So go ahead, y'all finish sharing your takeaways while I finish my water. <laughs> and if you haven't finished yours, finish your water. <clears throat> Uh, Sharon says, amen. All right. What's the name of the book again? Um, it is, the exact title is Approval Addiction, Overcoming Your Need to Please Everyone by Joyce Meyer. That's right. Drink your water, take your vitamins, go for a walk, have a great day on purpose. <laughs> And of course, read the word. That's right, Melissa. Yes, I'm almost done, y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Hashtag, I will drink my water. <laughs> Got my 16 ounces in this morning. Uh, I will stop being a people pleaser. That's right. That's right. Danielle's takeaway is I don't have to be people pleaser. Even God, listen, come on. That's right. Even God himself doesn't please people all the time. No, it's a complete sentence. One more time before I let y'all go. Type no period in the comments. Let's do it one more time. One more time. No period. It's a complete sentence. All right. So that's it. Ah, that's it, y'all. I feel, this feels strange. I don't have to rush off because Anthony's not getting up right now. He's still in a bed sleep. He's off today. Okay, I was like, good night. Good, good night slash good morning, Cheryl. All right, you all, I gotta go. Um, I have some things to do today. <laughs> Why am I acting like I don't want to leave you all? <laughs> Any, let's see. No, 
words to complete sentence. That's right. All right, y'all. I gotta go. Love y'all. Bye. Have a great day on purpose. <clears throat>